Hello, I'm Delia Colon, and this is WEDU Arts Plus. This first segment was produced by students at St. Petersburg College in partnership with WEDU. The Replay Museum preserves the experience of retro arcade games for generations to enjoy. Check out this hands-on experience located in Tarpon Springs. My name is Bobby. I work the front desk and help handle our event calendar, try to plan some fun events for people to come out and play for. I've worked here for four years. I love it. My husband and I actually had our, our wedding here, so I love it like it's mine, even though I just work here. Brian and Becky are just big gamers themselves. They love amusements. They love playing games. So. I think that they amassed this collection and kind of felt selfish just keeping it all to themselves and wanted to share it with the rest of the world. A place like Replay is like a test ground for these games. We see things break that nobody else sees. We have problems that nobody else will encounter because of the amount of plays that these games get on them. You know, longevity is always the goal. We want to make sure each repair is uh, something that's going to make the game last a lot longer, hopefully, as opposed to like continually going back in and fixing something. But yeah, there's sort of a checklist as far as like looking for bad connectors because that can just cause things to overheat if there's not good signal going through. Just cleaning the pinballs so that the game will play properly is a big part of it. A lot of the older games will switch out to different uh, style of light bulbs and put LEDs inside of them. So just to take away the heat, it draws less power. So there's, there's certain things like that to keep in mind. The designers of the game would put notes in the game that a well-lit game is gonna be played more and for that matter, a clean, well-lit game. So it's more like, you know, we got people that come in for the first time and they, they kind of just start walking around. And it's kind of hard to say what makes them go up and put their hands on that first game, especially if it's one they haven't seen before. But I think it always comes down to some part of like what they've been through in their life, some part of their history, whether they're into cars or like if it's some kind of movie that they're into, it could be a band that's, that's highlighted on one of these games. A lot of it will, will definitely be like the artwork, I feel like. If you're able to see the game, it's gonna be the artwork. I don't know if it's the colors, if it's the imagination. I mean, the older pinball machines from the 70s, they definitely pop, they're trying to be eye-catching, sometimes maybe slightly suggestive in a sexual manner, but these were back in the days when it was, you know, room full of guys playing pinball where there weren't really children involved, maybe not women around. So you can see the, the kind of development and change of art kind of moving back from risque art pieces and being more family friendly. I mean, you can find out a lot about yourself just by playing games, whether it's just by yourself, you can kind of tell like how competitive of a person you are and how well you deal with like stressful situations. To me, it's gaming therapy. It's very relaxing, getting to hit the flippers, just to see how much the game has evolved over the years. I just love it. <laughs> In a place like Replay with the games that we have here, this style of gaming is something where, even if you're playing by yourself, you still have like a social connection uh, with people, whether you hear somebody yelling out of frustration because they just lost a ball, or somebody is like cheering because they just got a replay or an insanely high score. We definitely have people coming in that are trying to set high scores. Um, replay is known for having scores that are just like super hard to beat because of how many people come in and play the games. I had uh, number three, number four for a little bit and uh, I've, I've been surpassed so I gotta have to go chase it again. My best high score here is going to be my GC on Tales of Arabian Nights. It's 44 million. I got to the wizard mode and rescued the princess. Part of my like high score chase isn't even technically the score. It's more beating the game and reaching that wizard mode, whatever that final objective is. My son is in the Navy now. He's up in, in South Carolina. I'll send him like a text message real quick and say, look at the score I just put up. And he'll do the same thing. If he goes out in the community, he's able to play pinball or any of the video games. He'll send me a score back. So 
It's a way for us to stay in, in contact with each other and connect, even though we're, you know, hundreds of miles apart. Seeing the generations actually come together, enjoy and love these games is why I do what I do. I know we're doing the right thing. I know we're here for the right reasons and we are sharing all this fun with generations to come because we need the younger kids to be interested in this. If there's any history or future for our kids, we got to get kids playing. We got to get kids playing pinball. We got to get kids playing the retro games because Someone's got to be interested once we're gone. For more information, visit replaymuseum.org.